First of all, hip hop killed R&B. Here's the fucked up part. Hip hop was built off R&B. The first hip hop hit was a remake of an R&B record. Good times. Dun, 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 dun. Puff, Dre, all those guys were sampling old R&B records, soul records, and made it hip hop. But then hip hop's currency is cool. R&B's currency was talent. R&B also killed itself because they did this. They, they wanted to show you how talented they was. They couldn't wait to show you how good they sang. So while R&B is over there trying to be perfect, hip hop was like, I am the most imperfect thing you can embrace. And we fucked with it. So now R&B is literally in the shadow of hip hop. And let's be clear, R&B is winning. They're just not black faces singing them. Mm. Ed Sheeran is making R&B records. Adele is making R&B records. Sam Smith is making R&B records. So R&B is winning. It's just black people aren't doing it no more because we so caught up in the cool shit. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Tamara, a.k.a. Girl from Harlem. What up, y'all? This is Ray Daniels, the culture referee. I like the pause you do in the middle. Okay, anyway, it's back to school time. So the kids are in school, back in full motion. How you doing with that? Uh, I'm in Atlanta. So uh, our kids went to school two and a half weeks ago. Yeah, so now you're in full motion. That's what I'm saying. So everybody's oh, doing good. Well, well, the way my life works, I, I, I support the money. <laughs> and... um. And the love, and I've done my part. I saw a video of you taking your daughter to school the other day. Adorable. I might take her to school, yeah, because that was the first day, and I want to meet the teacher, and I want to make sure that everybody know their daddy, her daddy, crazy. But outside of that, I'm good. I don't, I don't really have to deal with the school thing. I'm not really that parent. And what grade are your kids in? Miyoki's in kindergarten, and LR, Little Raymond, he's in eighth grade. Okay, so you don't have this issue yet, but kids back to school have been going back to school and getting full faces of makeup done for the oh, first no. day of school, wearing Balenciaga, Dior drips, like, it's crazy. I don't believe in investing money into kids' clothing. Uh, I'm not really the guy that's the parent that's going to buy my kid fashion, high fashion, because that. I don't want to dress my son the way I would dress. He's going to dress like a kid. Simple as that. I agree. Like, they wanted Spider-Man sneakers then. Got them Dior, so. No, 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 no. He wanted Nikes, and I got him Nikes. But if he wanted Dior, I would tell him, you need to Dior your ass and go get a job to make the money, because I'm not buying you Dior. And I bet you he would find a way to get, he would be cutting grass. He would, he would. figure it out. He would. My son is a hustler. I ain't going to lie. He's a hustler, but I'm not buying him. I don't believe in that. Why would you buy something that they got to outgrow for sure? You know what I want to say? You were right the other day. I know. I know. So Where the, what's that button? Where the button at? <laughs> Everybody's panicking oh. right now. So I'm talking about how parents have been using Instagram like in the wrong way against their kids. So the newest prank on IG is like this scary filter that comes and they lock the kids in the bathroom and the kids think that they're locked in with a like some scary ghost and the kids are panicking. Um, and somebody made a good point and they said, parents tend to be children's first bullies. Ooh, that's a good line. And it really resonated. So I just want to say like, you, you might have had a good point the other day. When we, we discussed all, that. every adult in here brings trauma from their childhood to the table. 90% of the trauma we bring to the table right now to this day is some shit that happened to us when we were kids that we just haven't let go of. Just some shit. Like, mm -hmm. and I think that, you know, why add to that? Mm -hmm. I, I, my, my kids my kids are not going to grow up in a place where daddy traumatized them. I'm not going to say daddy's going to be perfect, but I'm not going to deliberately traumatize you by playing a joke on you because I get laughs out of it. I'm not doing that to my kids. Hell no. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't grow up in this generation where kids are trying to like embarrass. I mean, parents are embarrassing their kids just for likes. Um, and my mom was here the other day. Shout out to my mommy. Hi, mom. Shout out to mama. Yeah, Ray said some nice things, got me some brownie points with my mom. Um, so anyway, Swiss Beats and Dr. Dre are suing Trilla. Susie Timberland. Oh, Timberland. Excuse me. Oh, I got that wrong. Swiss Beats and Timberland are suing Trilla for- Triller. Tr Triller. Excuse me, um, for verses. Um, how did we get here? Why? What, do you, what are your thoughts uh, on that? I don't know. It, something fishy, because Versus released a statement saying it's unfortunate with Tim and-, and Swiss is saying, um, I have some guesses. Uh, Trilla was already a platform that was, I want to say, struggling, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to compete with TikTok. I mean, and, you know, Versus was way bigger than Triller, but Versus just wasn't probably an organized company. So it was a perfect chance to merge organization and money with culture. So I'm thinking maybe that's what happened. And, you know, they're still, you know, probably 
having money troubles. Because I just saw an article where Triller was being sued by creatives who said that for a million dollars plus that said they didn't pay them. So, I mean, I, 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 I'm going to always side with culture just because, you know, especially the culture I'm from. So, you know, pay them. You know what I'm saying? Like, like when you bought it, you that was the ultimate clout chase. Mm -hmm. You really wanted to bring, buy it to put it on your, put your name next to it. Great. Now pay them, man. Pay yeah, Ray them, pay J had commented and was like, you guys move too fast, but you know, good luck. Kind of saying that they were in a rush to hurry up. I think what, I think it's two sides. I think because they signed the deal in what, 2021. So I think what happened was after the pandemic started lighting up, they were fearful that versus might not stay as high. So they tried to hurry up and sell it to the highest bidder real quick. Well, no, no, no. They, they needed to level up. And sometimes when you need to scale, you got to take money. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, you know, you got to, when you want to scale, you need money and resources. So versus, versus live, literally lived on Instagram mm -hmm. and Trilla gave it a platform and a home to be, but they have to pay those guys now. I think that only thing I think is that this is the lesson I want to make everybody learn. Swiss Beast and Timberland decided to battle each other and the only thing that made them rich is they gave it a name. What if they call it the Swiss versus Timberland battle? Right. It doesn't become a brand that they sell for 50, 60 million dollars a year later. You realize that they sold that shit for a year. They sold that shit a year and a half later. Pandemic started mm -hmm. March 2020. They sold it summer 2021. For they sold them for 28 million, but they already said they got checks already. So they probably sold it for like 40, 50 million. And what they did was they put a brand on something, uh, they packaged it up, and now if anybody wanted to do it, they did not have the exclusive rights to artists battling. Let's be clear. They just had the name. And they gave it a name, and then everybody wanted to do one. To me, that's the lesson. Fuck, listen, millionaires sue millionaires. That shit is nothing to me. It's like everybody rich. Is somebody gonna be a little richer and somebody ego gonna be a little hurt? But the lesson in that needs to be these guys built something. That's why I always speak to people about packaging. Like, don't just come in the room and say, I'm doing something. Like, how many, how many online chefs do you know? How many wow. people you see online cooking food, right? A billion. But one guy did this. And, it, it. and he became a phenomenon. Packaging, bro. You have to be known for something in our culture in this world to win. Don't be just dope. Be significantly dope by being known for one thing. And it's that simple. That's a real lesson. That is a really good lesson. Speaking of lessons that we're learning from people in the industry, um, Rick Ross just got sued um, because some of his businesses were making the employees like pay for their own oh. training and they were working on the minimum wage. Um, but... He was really proactive with this. So the story kind of broke yesterday. He took the to IG today to make a statement. He took accountability for it. And he said like... What does the statement say? In May I hear it? In business, um, he said, in business, you make mistakes. But the important thing is to never make the same mistake twice. Perfect. This is the fucked up part. We got to stop crucifying each other over fucking mistakes. Okay? Rick Ross is not a restaurateur. He didn't go to school to be a restaurateur. He was, he's a hustler. He's a businessman. He saw a chance to make business. Do, what, do you know who owns the McDonald's right here around the corner? Do you know who owns, that's the part I'm saying. They, when they mess up, you don't blame the owner, but I feel like they use that, they use, the way the world set up now, they needed to, they needed to find a way to bring him down. To me, that was whack. Rick Ross, it was, bruh, he didn't probably know. He probably didn't even, he probably didn't even go to the store mm -hmm. once a year. You gonna hold me accountable? So to me, that was the whack part, but. Hey man, he ain't a restaurant tour. But I think that the Have you ever heard Rick Ross not paying a producer? <laughs> Have anybody ever heard Rick Ross getting sued for not paying a producer? Have anybody sued Rick Ross for not showing up to a show? Then judge him by that. Right, Don't judge him by a restaurant that he a, 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 a chain restaurant that he, him and his family own. Come on, man, that's whack as fuck. But I think the takeaway from this is being accountability, um, holding yourself accountable, um, addressing things right away. He didn't leave it up to the media to keep spinning it. He Tackled he couldn't. it head on He couldn't he, he, did what he, he couldn't he couldn't leave it up to the media To spin it Because they already spun it mm -hmm. But he was able to control his narrative And say this is what it really is He addressed it He apologized if he did He did Okay he apologized And that's it Hey bro play his fuck up Play his fuck up that is <laughs> Play his fuck up all the time bro I fuck up I'm, I'm not gonna never miss nobody Judge nobody for messing up Now if you mess up three or four times Doing the same thing Now you might just be a fuck up once you're sorry, 
Two times you're sloppy. Three times you just don't give a fuck. Excuse my language. Okay, Harlem. Um, That's some Harlem shit. I've never heard that in the South, but go ahead. I got that from Raising Cane that came out this week. <laughs> Some <weekend>. New York <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, but that's why Rick Ross is the GOAT, because he really does know how to tackle business. Like, even if he did mess up, he stood on it, and that's what GOATs do. That's GOAT behavior. Um, speaking of a GOAT, Yeezy, one of your favorite people, is selling um, his clothing in garbage bags. Like, that's how he wants to display. And he doesn't want... The workers to help you find your size. Like he wants you digging through the. Why are you smiling? Like this is because Kanye is brilliant. How? What, thank you. This is. I, I figured you would be able to tell me how this. I'll is tell brilliant. you. Go ask the question. Because I'll tell you. He's on, brilliant. Because it's wait. Because we're talking about it. Boom. How many rappers and people have clothing lines? Thousands of them. Why are we talking about his? Because he knows how to make you care. That's why he's my favorite artist of all time. The part. Listen. Let me tell you something. The number one talent. To have in today's world for any individual is maintaining, no, gathering and maintaining attention. That is the number one skill. The Kardashians have conquered that and a few of them are billionaires. The skill of maintaining attention, that is a skill that you need to have. And if you, if you understand it, you will be rich forever. Kanye gets that. Clap for that man. Where the applause at, man? Clap for that man. We need to celebrate a black man that gets it. So you're going to go digging through the trash bags for your Yeezy shirt? It's not about that. I just want to know what you... But that's what I'm trying to say. But listen what I'm saying. There's a lot of things that I wouldn't participate in. But if it makes people talk, then that's what matters. And to me, Kanye gets how to make people talk. You got to get the people going. Bro, bro, let me tell you something. I want to tell you something. 300 years from now, when we're all in here dead and gone, they're going to be talking about Kanye. Like they talk about Mozart, like they talk about Beethoven, like they talk about any great artist. They're going to be talking about him. So instead of us saying, what the fuck? We need to be like, how? Wow. How do we get at this? Winners don't study. Okay. When you watch winners, you're either mad that they're winning or you're learning how to win like them. Mm -hmm. I want to learn how to win. I want to keep learning how to win. I don't want to, I'm never going to be mad at somebody from winning. I don't, I could totally disagree with who you are and still, like, I don't, I'm not a fan of the Kardashians at all, but Kris Jenner is a fucking genius. How do you not respect what this woman has built with her daughters? None of them are athletes. <laughs> like, dog, like, dog, she built a billion dollar empire with daughters who are pretty, who can't sing, can't, Dance, let I know of. But they stayed away from drugs too. I think that was a big thing. Like she kept their image. Hey, guess what? Clean. Dr. Dre got richer when he called the when he made the album the Chronic. See, what I'm talking about. I don't look at it like that. That's the problem. I no. don't compare Disney World to Nickelodeon. I'm not comparing. I, no, but you're saying anybody. that you're saying, saying that, that they didn't use drugs, and I'm, I gave you an example I'm, of another dude that became a billionaire talking about drugs. That's not what I was saying. What I was, was saying, saying that their image was clean the whole way. They didn't have a lot. They had scandal, but their scandal had nothing to do with like even when their kids were growing up as teenagers, they weren't getting arrested. They weren't um, doing drugs, doing alcohols. All their image remains pretty clean for them to Can be I in the spotlight. Like that a very way. interesting question. When is the last time you saw? How often, if we see 10 mug shots a month on mm -hmm. celebrities, how many of them are women? One out of 10? Two out of 10? Well, it's actually not it, even. Exactly. Yeah. Women don't have scandals like that. Every scandal came from the man doing some fuck shit. That's why I don't want women to act women like Women are us. like the base of scandals. Nah, women are the reason for scandal. They are the reason for scandal because men do dumb shit to impress y'all. <laughs> or do shit they shouldn't do to get y'all. I've never had a woman get in trouble for coming after me. I've never had, I've never had a woman lose money coming after me. <laughs> I never had a woman lose anything coming after me. Ask me how much I've lost going after a woman though. <laughs> I would love to know. It's a, a, a lot. A lot. Because <laughs> I've, I've lost a lot of money, but the one thing I've lost more than anything was time. Mm. And I can't get that back. That's why that don't even matter to me. So, yeah, men are, men are fuck-ups. Women aren't. So when you say celebrating the Kardashians because they haven't been to jail, it's like, what the fuck? Like, let me tell you something my mom used to say to me when I was a kid. It pissed me off. Mom, I always be tell my mom, Ma, I don't have money for, you don't have money to help us with Jordans and all that other stuff. Or I would tell my mom, like, Ma, you know you never bought us Jordans or anything. You know my response, my mom's response would be? 
At least I went on crack. <laughs> that's what not what I thought the answer was. Oh, no, that's my be. point. Who the fuck compares himself to a crackhead? <laughs> but that's what my mom would do. I ain't on crack. It's like, mom, what the fuck does crack got to do? You be asking you for some sneakers. I get it though, because a lot of parents in that era was. That's my point. I don't believe. Listen, let me tell you something about this world. Comparison is the. No, the, let me tell you about this world. Comparison. Let me tell you something about this world. We, we have all been led wrong. We get more. You don't get rewarded for doing good in this world, but you do get punished for doing bad if you get if you get caught. So I'm not rewarding you for doing what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want nobody to tell me you're a great father because I'm being what a father's supposed to be. I'm just being a father. Right now, I might be a great father when I do other things that maybe you'd be like, damn, you went that far? Like, damn, like my daughter, I, my daughter had a party at Disney World. That shit cost me ten thousand dollars. And it was a 30 minute party at Disney World, but she went to meet the fucking princess. She cried the whole time, by the way. She didn't even take a picture with the princess. Never again. Was she crying because she was happy? Nah, or? she was crying because uh, that's a whole thing. We need to do it. Oh, nah. okay. <laughs> it was like the moment was on her. <laughs> The princess walks in and everybody looked at her and it was like action. And she was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> she was like, get me out of here. She was like, get me out of here. So literally, I think I took more pictures with the princess than my daughter. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to get my money's worth. But point is, is this, is that we got to stop asking for rewards for doing what you should do. You, you get rewards when you do super versions of what you should do. That's when you get the reward. But you could do one bad thing and it ends everything for you. Totally agree. Rick Ross probably has how many restaurants? 40, 50, 100, who, who knows? Meaning how many thousands of employees? But a couple employees got fucked. Mm-hmm. Let's focus on that. Come on, man. It's the world we live in. It's fucked up. We got to stop that shit. We got to start thinking like winners. What would a winner do? I say that stuff to myself. I say that to myself every time somebody hits me the idea. What would a winner answer to that? You got something? You got something for me? Okay, good. Um, Diddy recently asked a great question on Twitter. What was the question? Who killed R&B? So, before you answer, do you think R&B is dead? Oh, man, that's a great question. I think R&B... I don't think it's dead, but I do think it's been chopped up and no one can recognize what it is. I don't think it's dead, though. Give me an example. Um, First of all, hip-hop killed R&B. Hip-hop killed R&B. Like, hip-hop killed it. Here's the fucked up part. Hip hop was built off R&B. Mm-hmm. The first hip hop hit was a remake of an R&B record. Good times. Dun, 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 dun. That was the first. Hip hop, it was built off R&B. Making R&B records. Puff, Dre, all those guys were sampling old R&B records, soul records, and made it hip hop. But then hip hop is, hip hop's currency is cool. R&B's currency was talent. Mm, I like that. So, so hip hop, it was all about who was the coolest, like who was most braggadocious. R and B was about expressing your feelings with a great voice. So, you know, now like I was meeting with a uh, and R two days ago, and she played me her R and B artist, and that shit sounded like rap to me. I was like, this ain't R and B. This is melodic singing. This is melodic rap. And she's like, well, yes, it is, but he's R and B because he could sing. R and B also killed herself. Ooh, R and B killed herself because R and B. They did this. They, they wanted to show you how talented they was. That's what R&B did. Like, they couldn't wait to show you how good they sang. They couldn't wait to get on stage and run you off. And hip-hop was just raw. Mm-hmm. So while R&B is over there trying to be perfect, hip-hop was like, I am the most imperfect thing you can embrace, and we fucked with it. So now R&B is literally in the shadow of hip-hop. Who could save R&B? Um, who could save R&B? I think I can. Okay. Actually, no, I can't. So, um, I know, speaking I know of me that, and my team, we can save R&B for sure. I, and it's not, that's not no, because I'm on my own nut shit. That's not that. It's because there's a science. Because, okay, let's be clear. R&B is winning. It's just not black faces singing them. Mm. The Weekend is an R&B singer. He is, he's, he's African, Canadian, but, you know, he, he's not African American from the United, you know, from the U.S. Ed Sheeran is making R&B records. Uh, Adele is making R&B records. Sam Smith is making R&B records. R- but Bruno Mars is incredible making R&B records. So R&B is winning. It's just black people aren't doing it no more because we so caught up in the cool shit. Okay, so... So that's why I think I could bring it back because I feel like it's a way to make it cool. 
like, and we can make it work. That's you look what like I believe. You got a vision going. You look I like do. you want. I do. I do. Like, I'm like, bro. I'm like, I, like, I'm literally like. There's not. There's. There's a reason why the people that have worked with us have all had hits in one. In one. There's not. That's not a mistake. That's not. That is because there's a science to this shit that most people don't understand. That's that goat talk right there. All right. So we're gonna close out. I just want to know who are the best R&B singers to come out in the past ten years. The past ten years. So give me three. The best R&B singers in the last 10 years. Um, I want to say, I think, I don't, would you call Doja Cat R&B? Let's vote. I don't give it. I don't get it. I, she sings. Um, I think the best, Bruno Mars, to me, he's, he's, the, he's the best artist in the world right now, to me. I've never heard you say that. He's the most... He's most all around best. I mean, well rounded, yeah. most well rounded. Like Beyonce is the biggest, mm -hmm. and she's a whole nother stratosphere. But Bruno is making fucking hits that everybody that can listen. Everybody to. can listen to, and that's at the core of R and B is. R and B was for everybody. Soul music for everybody. That was soul music was for us for everybody. Like you could play it at a party, mm -hmm. you could fuck to it, you could play it with your kids. It's for every moment in our life. Rap is kind of like, right? You had sex or rap song? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Braxton. You had sex. Or, okay, so <laughs> Braxton had sex to R&B song, but he's from Alabama. No rap. He's he from Alabama. That's what, I, he, 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 he fucking to, to to rap songs. It's okay. He's Alabama. Not don't disrespect to Alabama, but All right, you, know, you gave me one. He'll say that. Um, Bruno, who, I got. It's, it's hard to think about. Um, I can't. I don't know. I can't think I, Cause how about this I'll say it But I'd rather do a real segment later Where you ask me to like Focus on it So I'ma just say it And I'm pretty sure That people are gonna be pissed If I say this But I would say Bruno Mars The Weeknd Um And I wanna say Drake Oh Sugar Snaps You playing Drake as an R&B No Drake is a rapper But he's making better R&B music Than the R&B singers okay. Cause the R&B singers Out here trying to go <laughs> Drake is just out here Getting right to the fucking point he getting right to it. That's why it works. I agree. It definitely is working for Drake. I, my thing is, why don't R&B want to be R&B anymore? That's the real thing. You know better than us. Tell us why R&B doesn't want to be R&B anymore. I have to charge for that one. That's what, I know the answer to that one, but they're going to have to pay for that one. Uh, I'm just I'm just saying, like part of I am a podcaster now, officially, oh, but I, I am... The people gonna I do got hits in. on the radio right mm. now. I do got hits everywhere. I do... And I, it, it is a science to this shit. You know what? I would say, I'm going to add to it blue. Blue is good. Blue is dope too. Yeah, he's dope. Good one. So that's what I would say. I see how it was all men there, but I'm not gonna make this a male female thing. All right, so thank you once again for sitting down with me. This is the God Show. Let's do it. And that's Ray Daniels. Mm.